This is the fourth of four video presentations covering our recently refreshed legacy study, The Sign for the Bride, Part 1. This is part of the larger study titled, When Cometh That Thief in the Night, on TheOpenScroll.com. Find links to this featured web page below in the description or on the Open Scroll blog. This installment features these sections titled, How Can the Lie Be So Convincing? The Lie and the Authority of the Vatican, A Supernatural Multimedia Hoax, Countermeasures that Safeguard Against Deception. How Can the Lie Be So Convincing? As shown in the preceding section, the author has paired verses 1 and 2 with 9b through 12, informing us that the exceptional level of deception relates most particularly to the lie. That observation simply explains how the lie will be so convincing. Yet, we can glean more about the nature of the deception and the presentation of the lie from the details of the text. There are spiritual components and natural or physical components that will work together synergistically, which is to say that the degree of deception produced will be greater than the sum of its parts. In a later section, we're going to share some observations and impressions about how the presentation of the lie will probably be leveraging some advanced technologies. In 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 1-3, through 3, Now we request you, brethren, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, that you not be quickly shaken from your composure or be disturbed, either by a spirit or a message or a letter as if from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come unless the apostasy comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. When Paul writes, either by a spirit, or a message, or a letter, it may seem like he's not really sure about how the lie will be presented. The author could easily have conveyed this in a very exacting way, and certainly would have if that served his purposes best. I believe that the lie will be brought forth in each of these ways. Perhaps some people will receive it in one way and others differently, but it seems likely to me that people will receive it in all these ways. The first listed mechanism of the lie is a spirit, pneumatos. In 2 Chronicles 18, verse 21 from the English Standard Version, And he said, I will go out and will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, you are to entice him, and you shall succeed. Go out and do so. Some versions offer a deceiving spirit instead of a lying spirit, and they both make the same point. Will the spirit that Paul identifies be testifying through the mouths of all the prophets? That seems to be a reasonable inference. Yet, I believe there's more to it than just that, with a lying spirit being far more widely distributed. We'll explore that probability shortly. The second listed mechanism of the lie is a message or word, lagu. The Greek word lagu has a range of meanings that gives the sense of a communication that is most commonly verbal. The lie, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come, will be on someone's lips, on the news broadcast, heard in a phone call or a Zoom meeting, left in your voicemail, text messages, in Twitter feeds, via Instagram, forums like Reddit, on Facebook pages, on podcasts, blogs, and video channels, etc. The third listed mechanism of the lie is a letter or epistle as if from us. Such a communication as that would be recognized as having all the authority of the early apostles. It would compare to the canon of the scripture. If an ancient scroll were to be brought forth and authenticated with an impeccably documented provenance, who could counter the claim of apostolic authority and deny the validity of the message it contained? In a later section, we'll address the matter of who might produce such a fraudulent work with a bogus bona fides and grant it their own authoritative seal of approval. Let's turn our attention from that side of the thematic equation to the other which informs us further about how the lie can be so convincing. 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 9 through 12 That is, the one whose coming is in accord with the activity of Satan, with all power and signs and false wonders, 
and with all the deception of wickedness for those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth so as to be saved. For this reason God will send upon them a deluding influence so that they will believe what is false, in order that they all may be judged who did not believe the truth but took pleasure in wickedness. Verse 9 informs us that what will be in accord with the activity of Satan will be attended by all or every power. Follow the link and consider how significant that factor will be in the raising of the level of deception. It's huge! Verse 9 also informs us that this, which we know relates most particularly to the presentation of the lie, will involve signs. Again, you'll find a brief word study enlightening. Signs signal us. They tell us this thing, whatever it is, means this. In this context, we must infer that these signs will validate the lie. Verse 9 further informs us that this will involve false wonders. If you do the word study I just suggested, this will speak more loudly to you. The Greek-English interlinear renders teresin pseudos as wonders of falsehood. I think it's fair to say that people will be gobsmacked, awestruck, astonished, and astounded. In verse 10 we read, Every deceit of wickedness. In verse 11 informs us that a working of delusion is sent by God himself. These phrases are paired together in the 2 plus 2 parallelism spanning 9b through 12. How will these things manifest and what kind of impact will they have when the lie is presented? The phrase, every deceit of wickedness, pretty well expresses the sense of the Greek text. The word for deceit means deceit, deception, delusion, the word for wickedness means injustice, unrighteousness, hurt. This is the same word used in verse 12, which is also translated wickedness, but took pleasure in wickedness. What will manifest in connection with the presentation of the lie is every, all, deception, delusion of unrighteousness, wickedness. People are going to be nearly universally overwhelmed and overtaken. Second Thessalonians 2.11 For this reason God will send them a deluding influence so that they will believe what is false. When God sends this deluding influence those impacted will believe what is false. Absolutely. The Greek English interlinear translates Energeian planes as a working of delusion. The same word for a working appears in verse 9, translated as with the activity, with the activity of Satan. There are eight occurrences of the word. It's a working of God with one exception in verse 9 where it's a working of Satan. So it's a supernatural working. The deluding influence is a working of delusion from the Greek word planes. The fundamental sense of the word is a wandering. Its usage finds its meaning a wandering, figurative deceit, delusion, error, sin. Considering the usage in each of the ten occurrences, the translation in verse 11 seems pretty sound. The wandering involves the matter of sin and sinful behavior. It makes me think of a ship at sea. When the ship's moral compass is broken and the navigator doesn't realize it is deceived, the ship will wander off course into error. When God sends us energian planes, they'll go off course. They will believe what is false. These various observations explain how the lie will be so convincing, but we can learn still more about the factors involved from other passages of Scripture. From Revelation 18, 23, And the light of a lamp will not shine in you, the great city Babylon, any longer. And the voice of the bridegroom and bride will not be heard in you any longer. For your merchants were the great men of the earth. 
because all the nations were deceived by your sorcery. Other versions read, And all the nations were deceived by your witchcraft. For all nations have been deceived by thy enchantments, because all the nations were deceived by your magic spells. By your magic spell all the nations were led astray. Because in your spell-inducing drugs all the races were led astray. This describes some of the activity working of Satan that has had an impact on the world for many, many years. It will continue to make an impact after the lawless one is revealed. Pharmakia may possibly have the most impact ever when the lie is presented. The Greek word translated, were deceived, has the same root as the word planes, a wandering, which is translated as deluding in 2 Thessalonians 2.11. What we're dealing with here is the impact of the practice of sorcery, witchcraft, and the casting of spells. Most specifically, pharmakia involves drug spells, like with magic potions, but that seems to be just one of the magical arts that will be leveraged to the end of deception. Consider the context of the word's use in the fifth chapter of Galatians. Galatians 5, verses 19 through 21. Now, the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, pharmakia, enmities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these, of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Consider these passages from the book of Enoch. Note the concept of wandering in their going astray. Enoch 8 and Azazel taught men to make swords and daggers and shields and breastplates, and he showed them the things after these, and the art of making them, bracelets and ornaments, and the art of making up the eyes, and of beautifying the eyelids, and the most precious stones, and all kinds of colored dyes. And the world was changed, and there was great impiety and much fornication, and they went astray, and all their ways became corrupt. Mezarach taught all those who cast spells and cut roots, Amaras, the release of spells, and Barakel, astrologers, and Kokabel, portents, and Tamiel taught astrology, and Azardel taught the path of the moon. And at the destruction of men they cried out, and their voices reached heaven. Enoch 9, 6-9 See then what Azazel has done, how he has taught all iniquity on the earth, and revealed the eternal secrets that are made in heaven. And Samyaza has made known spells, he to whom you gave authority to rule over those who are with him. And they went into the daughters of men together, lay with those women, and became unclean, and revealed to them these sins. And the women bore giants, and thereby the whole earth has been filled with blood and iniquity. The root-cutting pharmacological drug spells that are being released today can still be attributed to the fallen angels. Beyond the traditional use of potions, we must factor in the proliferation of illegal drugs, vaccines, over-the-counter and prescription drugs, etc., also, there are chemtrail concoctions and whatever is contained in common aerosol sprays, pesticides, fertilizers, our water supply, etc. Think about all the hormones that have contaminated our environments. Consider the perversion of our food chain through GMO and hybridization and mRNA. Factor in nanotech. The forms of radiation that range across the entire spectrum that are broadcast from radio, TV, cell phone towers, satellites, harp installations, and the influence of particle colliders. I believe most, if not all of this, happens under the overarching pharmakia umbrella, which deceives the nations. Add to all that the impact that results from idols, charms, cycles, symbol magic, 
which we've been exposing in detail and putting on exhibit for many years, mass hypnosis, the variety of forms of sex magic, the use of NLP, the rituals performed by the pagans on their Shabbat cycles, often with sacrifice and offering, the rituals performed in private by the magical brotherhoods and covens, and certainly the rituals performed in public that are seen by the ignorant as being mere entertainments or as some expected manner of formal ceremony. And to all that, add the influence from the collective psi powers of the chosen ones and other mind-controlled slaves as they manipulate the thoughts and emotions of others, individuals, and groups. It can hardly be denied that the masses are already deceived about nearly everything of consequence. Quoting William Casey, the former director of the CIA, We'll know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false. He said that back in 1981. That particular program was said to be officially closed, but it seems to me that it met with overwhelming success, and the work of deceiving the public has obviously not been abandoned. William Casey was a Roman Catholic and a member of the Knights of Malta, a powerful brotherhood whose public and private faces do not match. The one who has charge over the Knights of Malta will be the deceiving false prophet who baptizes the lawless one. Again, if it is easy to be deceived in this present day and hour, how much more so when the greater deception arrives. In that day, it will nearly entirely overwhelm any resistance to the message and result in a mass epiphany. With full conviction, even the respected leaders of the church will accept that the day of the Lord has come. That's why we've been promised a sign and provided with a safeguard. The Lie and the Authority of the Vatican the Apostle Paul cautioned us about a lie that would be recognized as having all the authority of the early apostles. 2 Thessalonians 2, 2 That you not be quickly shaken from your composure, or be disturbed either by a spirit or a message, or a letter as if from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. If an ancient scroll were to be brought forth with bulletproof provenance, who could resist that kind of evidence and deny the message to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. The bride will counter the lie, of course, but their testimony will be rejected by nearly everyone. Only someone who is recognized as the supreme authority would be able to legitimize and authenticate such a document. The Pope will be the counterpart of John the Baptist at the baptism of the counterfeit Savior. Prior to conducting that service, he will assert that the letter or epistle in question is genuine granting it all the authority that will have been given to him. Among his official titles are these, Vicar of Jesus Christ, Successor of the Prince of the Apostles, Supreme Pontiff of the Universal Church. When it counts, the Vatican will have the support of every system of false religion, as Mystery Babylon the Great. Where could a letter as if from us come from? Could it be a new discovery, found in a cave like the Dead Sea Scrolls? Perhaps. Could a scroll be conveniently discovered in the vast collection of artifacts in the Vatican archives? That seems likely. When it is produced, at just the right moment, it will be received as a genuine and completely authentic letter from a recognized apostle or apostles, and the masses will accept that the day of the Lord has come. What that will mean, as it will be explained to the global masses, will prime them for the subsequent baptism and the enthusiastic welcoming of their Messiah who will, in truth, not be the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. A Supernatural Multimedia Hoax Bob and I believe that the Lord has been showing us how the lie, with all three of the mechanisms of 2 Thessalonians 2.2, as discussed previously, will manifest as a supernatural multimedia hoax we believe it will involve the exploitation of certain technologies, some of which are known to exist and also others that are not known to exist, 
either because they don't yet or because their existence hasn't yet been revealed. When the Lord began to impress this upon us, we noticed how models of this were being dramatized in various media presentations. Bob wrote at some length about this during the 2014 Winter Olympics because he recognized how the presentation of the lie was modeled in both the opening and closing ceremonies. Read Part 3, Sochi Winter Olympics 2014, The Ultimate Hoax, to gain insight into the nature of the coming supernatural multimedia hoax. The Vatican is already leveraging high-tech in their presentations, even in very public ceremonial rituals, and this speaks loudly to us about what's ahead. From the Vatican's observatories in Arizona on Mount Graham, Jesuit astronomers are eagerly and expectantly watching for the approach of something of enormous consequence. Tom Horn has been demonstrating how the Vatican is suggesting, in increasingly less obscure ways, that the ancient visitors are coming to Earth from afar, staging a return that will require a significant change in doctrinal interpretations for the Church. The Vatican is posturing and positioning itself to appear alongside the returned incarnating king as the inheritors of all authority in the earth. Imagine what this is going to look like in the day of disclosure. Here's a news report from 2014. The event happened as planned. And this is from the article titled, Pope Francis to Usher in Vatican 3D TV Transmission at Unprecedented Canonization Ceremony from March 31st, 2014. Pope Francis will become the first pontiff seen globally in 3D during the upcoming April 27th ceremony in St. Peter's Square, when two of his predecessors, John Paul II and John XXIII, will be canonized as saints. The unprecedented double canonization event will be produced in 3D by the Vatican TV Center, in a partnership with Rupert Murdoch's Sky Italia, B Sky B, and Sky Deutschland, Preboxes, and Sony. The ceremony will also be beamed into 3D movie theaters across Europe and in North and South America in what is being touted as the first convergence of HD, 3D, and 4K technologies for such a high-profile multimedia 3D event. At a press conference in the Vatican, CTV Chief Monsignor Dario Vigano said the live transmission will require more satellites than the Sochi Olympics. Vigano underlined that the Vatican decided to offer the canonization ceremony to the world in 3D in order to give people who would want to attend, but cannot, for many reasons including economic ones, the chance to get a fully immersive experience. The production will use 13 3D cameras positioned in spots that will give a unique and exclusive vantage point of St. Peter's Square. That should have your attention. offered to the world, the first convergence of HD, 3D, and 4K technologies, a triple whammy, double canonization event, live transmission, a fully immersive experience, 13 3D cameras. The Sochi Olympics are referenced with respect to the technologies that are beyond Earth. I did mention how such a letter or epistle component would have to be fully authorized as biblical canon, right? In Revelation 13, there's a double canonization in view as two beasts arise with authority. Catholics pray to canonize saints. Here's a quote from an article that's no longer available online, but it was published on 3-20-2014. It's titled, Vatican Library Will Digitize Its Archives and Put Them Online. The Vatican Library began a project on Thursday to digitize thousands of historical manuscripts dating from the origins of the Church to the 20th century and make them available online. Working with the Japanese technology group NTT Data, the library intends to scan and digitally archive about one and a half million pages from the library's collection of manuscripts, which comprises some 82,000 items and 41 million pages. The initial project will take four years and may be extended. Is the Vatican leveraging the latest advances in AI to assess and categorize and cross-reference their digitized body of work? Has some letter as if from us already been produced from the effort? When the appointed time for the lie arrives, 
We believe every kind of technology will be employed in the working of deception. In the tenth verse of Second Thessalonians we read, All or every deceit of wickedness. Second Thessalonians 2.10 And with all the deception of wickedness for those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth so as to be saved. The psi powers of every chosen one will be harnessed and focused to this end. In conjunction with that, it only makes sense to us that every effectual kind of acoustic and light-based technology will be employed to manipulate the minds and emotions of the global population. Some have reported that the CERN LHC particle accelerator has already produced certain kinds of special effects. Perhaps that too may be leveraged in perpetrating the greatest hoax. Psychotropic drug pharmacia will be activated and the perceptions guided by visual technologies like augmented reality projection and projected audio technologies that will make people see and hear what they're provided with on a level that is tailored to each culture and even each individual who will be very well known by their harvested data and DNA profile. We think it's likely that a live action transmission through time itself will be broadcast in the most personal ways. This stream may even involve some form of interaction through an open portal. While fraudulent, each person and community will interpret the experience as a first-hand witness, with the added sense of receiving a divine revelation. If you have seen The Penitent Man and Devs and our commentary on those shows, you will have a sense of the possibilities. With the Sovereign God providing the Energean Planes, a working of delusion, you can be assured that this deception will accomplish every intended result. Countermeasures that safeguard against deception. There will be a safeguard against deception. The sign that is the baptism of the lawless one will serve that purpose. However, only a remnant of the brethren will perceive it. They will have been prepared in advance with the countermeasures having genuinely received the love of the truth. The nature of the countermeasures is hinted at in the context of 2 Thessalonians 2.6, where we read, So that in his time he will be revealed. Knowing more about the appointed time and the sequence of events is the key, and in advance of when the events begin to unfold. The matter of having knowledge of the times and timing is a steady theme of this entire study, when cometh that thief in the night. The essential provision of the safeguard against deception involves these secrets. This will be addressed in the next part of this study. Because of what we learn from the linguistic structure of John 18, we understand that what is prophesied in the second chapter of Second Thessalonians will not be fulfilled completely the first time around. The sequence of events will begin, but the proceedings will be interrupted and effectively aborted. Time will be reset back to the year 2012, we believe, and only after that will the fullness of His time arrive. God's timely intervention has been planned from the beginning, and it will be executed with timely perfection. Luke 8, 16-18 now, no one after lighting a lamp covers it over with a container or puts it under a bed, but he puts it on a lampstand so that those who come in may see the light. For nothing is hidden that will not become evident, nor anything secret that will not be known and come to light. So, take care how you listen, for whoever has, to him more shall be given. And whoever does not have... Even what he thinks he has shall be taken away from him.